If you've upgraded to iOS 18.2, here are seven settings that you need to turn off right now. These are things that you should immediately do and turn off to help protect your privacy and help make your phone run as smoothly as possible. I'm gonna walk you through all those, but first hit the subscribe button down below. It really helps me out. Thanks guys. Now, the very first thing we'll do is we'll head into these settings here. And first, let's start with your privacy. So let's scroll down here. And after you've upgraded and gotten Apple intelligence, we need to make sure that Apple intelligence data isn't being sent without your permission. So let's tap on privacy and security here. And now let's scroll down to the very bottom and you'll see a new feature, Apple Intelligence Report. So tap on that and you'll be able to see here, it says this report may include personal data, data such as your messages, text, and other Apple Intelligence writing tools, which I don't necessarily want to send to Apple and I would prefer to keep this private. So I'm gonna tap where it says report duration and switch it to off. And I'm gonna hit okay. Essentially, this will turn off the you know, data gathering for Apple Intelligence and help prevent my privacy on my phone from leaking out to Apple or anything like that. Now, the second thing we will turn off is we'll go all the way back to the beginning and tap on your name at the very top. On here, you can see midway down is subscriptions. So whenever I upgrade my iPhone, I do a regular check on my active subscriptions. So let's tap on any of your subscriptions here. You can see I only have an Apple One subscription, but I have a bunch of expired ones. If you see a subscription on here that you don't necessarily remember signing up for, or that you don't know that you're being billed every single month for or every single year for that sub subscription, I would recommend just canceling it so that you don't basically waste your money on things that you're not necessarily using. Now let's walk through the next step. Let's go back to the beginning here, and we're gonna scroll down, and we're gonna choose general here. And then we're gonna scroll down again, and we're gonna choose background app refresh. This is a common culprit on why your battery life might be draining after you've upgraded to the latest iOS operating system. Sometimes for whatever reason, this is switched on, even though you might've switched it off in the past, or basically it switched to Wi-Fi or cell data. I would recommend just completely switching this off. This doesn't really add that much value. Basically, if you have phone apps that you've opened, basically it allows them to run in the background, updating Instagram and basically using up your data as well as using up your battery life. So I would just recommend turning this feature off. I don't really see many use cases on why this is a really good feature because again, it drains your battery and it drains your data by running apps in the background when you're not even looking at them. So after we've done that, let's go through some other things as well. Let's go back to the very beginning here. We'll scroll down and tap on apps at the very bottom. Now that we're in here, let's scroll down again. And what we're going to be looking for is the messages option. So tap on messages here. And now let's scroll down to the very bottom. Now there are a couple different things that we'll do here. One is RCS messaging. Make sure this is turned on. It says send and receive messages with RCS. Essentially this allows you to have rich interactions with other users if they have an Android device and you're texting them on your iPhone. You can do things like the heart emojis or reactions or group text will work a lot better if there are some iPhones and some Androids. So just turn this on. This is a big win that Apple finally added this into the iOS operating system. Texting Android users is a lot more seamless and easy. Now let's also scroll down here and you can see at the very bottom, you can see low image mode. So if this is turned on, it says images will be sent in lower quality. This is often on by default for whatever reason, but in this day and age, 2024, almost 2025, why do we want low image quality? I would just recommend completely turning this off. You want a highest quality re uh, resolution of images if they're sending you images through text. Now that we've done that, let's go back here and we're gonna go through another option as well. So from messages here, we're also gonna scroll down until we get to the S section and tap on Safari here. 
So once we're in Safari, you can see the default browser is Safari. You can tap on that and you can now change it to Google Chrome if you wanted it to be Chrome instead. Or in my case, I just use Safari, so I'll leave that there. Let's go back here and we'll check and turn basically on privacy restriction measures. So you can see prevent cross-site tra cross tracking. Essentially, this is preventing one website from being able to download a tracker onto your phone and then track your movement or other websites that you visited on other websites. So I'd recommend turning this on. Hide IP address from trackers is really great. And then fraudulent website warning, not secure, uh, uh, connection warning, turn those on. Now let's go to the very bottom because there's some hidden options at the very bottom in advance. So in here, you'll be able to see it for a couple of things. One is privacy preserving ad measurement. Now you might think that's good. I do want privacy preserving. However, it's worded a bit in basically confusing or misleading because this is ad measurement with privacy preserving. So if you want your phone to be measuring your basically activity, your, the websites you visit, all that stuff for advertising, then you can keep it on. But I usually toggle that off. Essentially, I don't want my iPhone to be measuring my activity for ads, even if it's privacy preserving. Now, the next thing we'll do is tap on advanced tracking and browsing. Um, I'm gonna turn this for all browsing to have that protection. Now, once you go through all of these steps, the last thing I would recommend doing is let's just go all the way back out of here. And on here, we'll tap on general and then scroll to the very bottom and just hit shut down. You'd be surprised how many times updating to the latest iOS operating system, for instance, 18.2, or if you're on 18.3 or whatever, essentially that will cause your phone to you know, have bugs, slow down. It's gonna be working a lot in the background, trying to process a lot of things associated with that new operating system. You'd be surprised how many times just shutting your phone off and then restarting it a few minutes later will fix a lot of performance issues, a lot of battery life issues, all of that stuff is just good to do. And your phone might not have been restarted for days or weeks or even months. So just shut it down and then turn it back on and you should be good to go. I hope this helps. If it did, hit the like button down below and leave a comment if you have any questions. Thanks guys.